right, so we finally come to the end here of our 20L5 restoration project. And uh, before this, you know, we've gotten inside of it. We've also done some repairs and some uh, future proofing by replacing some vital components and capacitors inside the monitor. And today we're just going to run through some of the calibration stuff as well as look at some settings that you can do that we have not covered in the past. So look, I have gone through and done an entire calibration video on this monitor uh, a little bit over a year ago, but uh, we're going to go through that a little bit more today. But if I miss anything in this video, go back and check that other video. I'll leave a tag for it. And that way you can make sure um, you know exactly what you're looking at if you're looking at a calibration issue on this monitor. Uh, and again, that will be also added to the playlist for this. So I wanted to do something unique and show you something maybe a little bit different. And I hope you could see this now. This is the back of this PVM and we're gonna look specifically at the yoke. Now, obviously it's been cleaned up and put back together. And now we're gonna go in here and we're gonna check out some of these convergence settings on the back of the PVM. I'm taking a bird's eye view here and I hope my picture isn't blocking at all. But what I'm looking at are these inputs right here. This one says YCH, YBH, and TLV. And those are just different, but there's potentiometers in that hole. And you spin a uh, screwdriver that fits down in there. And I don't, and I've got the screen pulled up here to show you the top of the screen. But what you're going to do is as you turn those potentiometers, you're going to just want to take a look at your convergence across your entire screen of your monitor. So you'll want to, you know, stick a screwdriver there, just turn it a little bit, see what the reaction is. But this is going to help you clear up some of the vertical convergence rather than going in and manipulating those uh, rings that we've done before. I'll link to the video if you need to use the rings to adjust. But if you just need to make a simple adjustment or if you want to not mess with the rings, that's what these potentiometers are in here for. Now, there's a lot more information for you in the manual on the exact specifics of what's going on here. But for them to you know sum it up nicely, those three potentiometers in the back can help with clearing up convergence on the L5 and uh, you know 14 inch and 20 inch, both of those should have this yoke and you'll be able to make those adjustments and that again will help you clear up the convergence at the tops edges of your screen. It's always good to use a, uh, you know, either a line generator or something that gets you horizontal lines across there so you can see the beams of your um, electrons and where they're actually hitting your screen. So the rest of this we're going to look at is going to be other calibrations using the service menu. This one is similar to the uh, other service menus where, you know, you want to have your RGB and everything or whatever you're using to calibrate set up. And like the other service menus and other monitors that are not as high tech as this one, to get into it, you have to press, press the Gauss and enter. So first you press menu on the buttons over here. You press menu on this right side of your button on the monitor. You're going to press the menu down here. And then after your menu is pulled up like it is here, then you want to go in and you press just like you do in other monitors. I know my head's in the way. You're going to press the Degas button, which is on the left-hand side, as well as the enter button on the right-hand side of the monitor menu. So press them simultaneously, and it will pull up as the menus. Now, you've got to make sure the menu's already up. So press menu and then enter and Degas at the same time. Sorry to keep going on that, but that's how you pull up your secondary menu where you can do a lot of the calibrations that uh, you really want to do for either geometry and um, other things like focus you can do use in here. You can also do um, your yoke adjustment as far as the tilt of the screen on here, which I'm about to show you too. This is the settings though. If you go into your deflection settings, these are all your settings that you control from this deflection portion of the uh, service menu. You've got a couple for linearity up here, two for linearity. This trapezoid is, um, that's more of tilt, the picture towards you, whether the top of the screen is tilting towards you and the bottom's tilted back. But that's how you swing that to make that. And then you've got a bunch of pin controls and the para control is more like that uh, vertical lean and bow. So you got a bunch of stuff like that that you could get in here. They did change it a little bit on what it's called, but that's how you do it. And if you go in, you can manipulate a setting 
by using the up and down key. First press enter on the setting. So you press up and down to pick whichever one of these you want to try to work on. And you press enter to go into that mode, that specific line item. And then once you're in that line item, you press up and down on the menu and you manipulate that item to make that value go up or down. And look, with this one, you don't have to hit de Gauss to write. You actually hit enter again to write and then it'll take you back out to this menu. Uh, but if you just hit menu and go back, you're going to leave it in whatever setting it was saved in. So if you're, you know, if you're in there changing, you don't remember what it is, hit menu and go back. Don't hit enter. Hit menu and go back, and then it will just go back to what it was before you started manipulating it. So I know it's a little confusing, um, and I'm sorry to kind of get into it in like a tangent like this, but I just want to make sure that you're doing it the right way. So if I'm confusing anyway, leave me a comment, let me know, and I'll try to explain it better uh, next time. But that's the overall controls, and these are you know the settings. And I think I go in here and might show you what my final settings are, but um, this, these values are going to be different for each uh, you know monitor. Whatever you're working on, you're not going to have the same exact settings. Like you can't put probably my settings that I have here and actually have it um, work for you. So what I've done here is I'm going to show you this landing, which is actually yoke tilt on this monitor. So if you have this L5, and this landing actually is in a lot of other menu uh, M2s, M4s, things like that. So, but it's really not as precise. I mean, you're on the other like medical grade and lower end monitors. You're moving it maybe a sixteenth of an inch if you're lucky. This one will move it a little bit more. And so we go in. This is again into that configuration menu. And you'll go look for this little toolbox, and it'll have landing. And this is some of these have two of two, so there's a second page, and that's where the landing is. And if I get in there and I pull back my uh, configuration screen here, where I can show you some of this uh, uh, when I adjust this landing, how it actually manipulates the screen tilt on here. But you increase, it goes to the right, and you decrease, and it goes to the left. You can kind of see, especially see how my uh, bottom of my screen is I'm going to get up here and switch the view for you in a second but I wanted to show um, that's what that is you you know most of those the rest of those aren't going to matter as much but I'll get in here now and we'll show you what we mean as far as um, like adjusting this landing a little bit more so again it's that right there so watch me as I move this you know that screen as you go max it starts to tilt to the right it starts to tilt to the left now I know it's harder to see since I've gone in and and evened it out as far as the vertical size of my screen. Most of the time you'd want to push this screen out a little bit. I like to shrink it down so I could see the whole thing in the screen. But this one's got a good setting right at 50. Um, so it's going to be left at that. But that's how you could go in and fix your screen tilt from outside this monitor. You don't have to get inside of it like you do other ones to actually change that. And those are just kind of the things that are different about this monitor. So once you get it nicely tightened up, you can get in there and run some tests. And that's what we're going to do today. So uh, for the rest of this, I'm going to actually pull my picture out of there, out of here on the, uh, the rest of the video. And I'm going to talk you through a little bit of this and we'll let it play because I do have some gameplay and I don't want you to see my uh, picture in the way at all. So the, today I'm going to show you uh, my 3DO. And this one does not have the RGB mod yet, but it does have a 240p switch, which I'll go into details a little bit more here. The reason I do like to use the 3DO, though, is it has uh, all the other standard outputs right out in the back, like S-Video and Composite and uh, RF right in the back of the... Um, actual video game console. Just wanted to show this adapter. Uh, this is kind of a rare adapter. I'll go over it maybe a little bit more in the future, but it does allow you to plug right into a 3DO and use Super Nintendo controllers, which is way better than the 3DO controllers. And it also breaks out to where two players can be used on there. But here's the little switch. And this is a little switch that lets you switch between 240p and 480i. The 3DO pretty much started with just 480i um, resolutions and that's what we're going to start with is the 480i and so it has to be in 480i mode for it to turn on and work but uh, once it's on you can use that switch and switch over between 480i and 240p and i'll show you that in some gameplay here in a second so it's really good to test things that are in um, you know composite 
as well as S video because you can test it, both those inputs, and you can test 240p and 480i. Uh, the game in there is one of Kirk Cameron's finest performances, and it's known as the Horde. So if you're um, if you own a 3DO, I definitely recommend checking that game out. So first off, this is obviously 480i resolution here on the screen. I'll show you. It's it's literally really blurry and uh, you know, it doesn't just doesn't look as good. It doesn't look terrible, but 240p looks a hundred times better. And uh, what I'll do is I'll go over now to the console. And um, I'll just enact the switch there. And sometimes it takes a couple flicks, but once it's engaged, you could definitely see the difference on 240p, how it gives you the nice scan line feature. And I think it looks a lot better than 480i. Now this is obviously very close. And um, this game doesn't you know, have the best, amazing, most amazing graphics, but it is a lot of fun. And it definitely is helped by the 240p. You're not getting any screen flicker anymore, uh, but that's kind of the uh, 480i and 240p tests I like to run. Is I like to check both those out, see how the screen works on those. And then, you know, the rest of the video today, I'm also going to take and uh, show you some other uh, inputs here. I'm going to go through, we've done the RGB and we've also done, uh, this one has shown both composite and S-Video. You don't see too much of a difference. S-Video does look quite a bit sharper on here. There's S-Video with the, uh, 240p switch engaged again right there. So that's that's um, that's how it looks. So we're going to go through now and take a look at uh, some other consoles. It's going to be a PlayStation. Rest of this video, we're going to go through now. I'm going to show you 240p in component. We'll move up to 480i, and then we'll also move to 480p. But that's pretty much going to do it for my talking part. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or comments below. I thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time with more retro content.